one icing and WTF NASA seriously bro part a double dust feature I'm gonna pop some dust features a double dust feature all right here's the real deal Holyfield punch in the face okay so I'm gonna show you a couple shots of the crappy timeline that I put together and if you'll notice from December 2012 to about April the 13th, Ison was in Gemini. From May to August, Ison will be in Cancer. And from September to December, Ison will be in Leo the Lion. And lions are badass. So that means September through December are gonna be pretty dang awesome. Ison was announced to us 9-24-12 and will reach perihelion with the sun around December 13th. And so in the eight months that have passed in this, let's say, 15-month lifespan of Ison from telling us about it to it getting to its most spectacular, we got one crappy B-movie 1940s Ed Wood sci-fi black and white video from NASA, which doesn't show us much, but at least it's moving. Gotta give him credit for that. And then they shot in January. We got in February. And then we got a single photograph from the Hubble, April 10th. It is now May 23rd. So in the eight month span, which is over half of this magnificent life, we've gotten one video, one photograph. And that's just bizarre. I mean, that's beyond bizarre. This is by far the most interesting celestial body we know of that shall be coming around this year. Could be the most important, interesting, exciting, and romantic sky watching event ever to known modern mankind, science and television, and media. Media's death on it, dumb and blind, obsessed with dead children. Man, America loves murdering freaks who kill white girls, little white babies. That is just bizarre. Are, America, what the F is wrong with you? Why do you give so much attention to murderers? Craziest and worst parts of our civilization get the most amounts of attention. Where common icing, which is a magical gift of the universe, gets very little. I mean, it's been like a like a fly fart. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Yeah, they ain't giving us much. We got a new article saying that Ison has a dust feature. All right, we're kicking on over to the Re-Man-Zako website. Associazione Friulana di Astronomia e Meteorologia. We're gonna get the update, pretty much the only update we've gotten in the last since the last video. Uh, they did give us some photographs, but where to serious hardcore astronomers, those photographs may be awesome. To me, they're like crap. I'm sorry guys, that photograph is not crap. It's just useless to me, considering I have no idea what a dust feature is and no one will tell me. I mean, they're not crap. I'm just saying that they don't tell me anything except for that it has a dust feature. And I don't know what a dust feature is and no one will tell me what a dust feature is. This comparison shows that the sunward feature we suspected from images taken on two 2013 is originally slightly north of west and then the position angle of the feature measured from north through east increases as one moves away from the opto center quotes Nalen. oh yeah that clears it up dude that is crystal freaking clear anyway you could put that in english or layman terms or common ice and dust features for dummies because i'm a dust feature dummy that is for sure the exact pa of this feature is tricky to determine as it will depend on how far away from the opto center that you look at when near the opto center pas can be very uncertain Nalen's interpretation is that the curvature of this feature is not due to any rotational effects, but is due to radiation pressure pushing dust grains towards the tail. Ultimately, this feature emerges in with the tail. What does that mean? I would it like, huh? What the hell is a dust feature, man? Like, I read the article and smart, tried to figure it out. The article don't make no sense. The article does have to refer to the extreme amounts of hype, where for the first three or four months, all that hype was science and NASA based. And then when it switched from scientists to YouTube, they started debunking stuff. So now we get this dust feature. Nobody's explaining what it is. We can't get photographs. What is a dust feature? Sounds like something from a new broom or like a dust buster. The dust buster with the new dust feature. Uh, we uh, The picture is like, oh yeah, hey, common Joe Blow looking at this photo really knows a lot. Oh, hey, yeah, that is totally a dust feature. What is a dust feature, man? Hey, can you please tell me what a dust feature is? It's a feature of dust. I don't know. You're like, yeah, dude. I mean, I looked up stuff and I'm totally confused. And I went out to like Godlike Productions and was like, hey, super science dudes, tell me. Nobody said anything. Nobody could tell me what a dust feature is. But here was my favorite part. At the end of this article by Nick Howes and Ernesto Guido. Guido. Was Guido a Guido? As the comet comes closer to the Earth, the spatial resolution will improve, and we should get more detailed views on the coma structure. Ongoing collaborations with scientists with the amateur community have been discussed in many recent published papers. And this is a prime example of one that is delivering valuable scientific data on a hugely interesting object. Let me read that again. A hugely interesting object. Everybody agrees this object is hugely interesting, but we are not getting crap of data on this. I do not know why. Oh, hey, wait, let's look at that photograph above that cool sentence. Credit NASA, ESA, and Z LeVay. Let's see, Anton was A, and then there's Z. Anton Z LeVay. Oh, okay. 
Now I get it. Jerks. Damn it. Crap. I'm gonna pop some dust features. I've been asking the wonderful Amy Mainzier, who is one of my heroes. Yeah, I love you, Amy. I love you, Amy. But in a very normal way. Don't get all freaked out. I love everybody, so don't feel too special. Okay, good. I've been asking her, hey, Amy, what is the dust feature on the Twitter? But she will not respond to me. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get an interview. Come on, Amy. Let me let me let me head over there to the West Coast. Ask you a couple of questions. Maybe we can have an interview down at the beach with a bottle of wine and uh, acoustic guitars. Any fucking who? Fucking uh, yeah. Dragging me down, man. Dragging me down. Okay, great. That is fantastic. We are talking about Comet C2012 S1 Ison. And guess what? NASA's a prude and a tease. NASA, you hear it? Yeah, I said it. You are a prude and a tease. And I know President Barack Obama probably orders you to be as such, seeing as how you guys are a military organization. Why? What are you scared to show us? What the hell is going on? Give it up. Come on, baby. I've been working. This is my eighth episode. And all I have been asking for freaking eight episodes is, can we get a better look at this thing? Like, you got dead children in a basement in Oklahoma, dead children in a school in Newtown. You got Benghazi. You got the IRS scandal. You got Israel and Syria going to war. You got murdering freak shows left, right, up, down on the television. Can we please get some good news for humanity? Let all human beings rally around Comet Ison. You know, this is something we can all get excited about. And that's where the potential of space exploration was in. The fact that all human beings should be able to get interested and excited about the things we don't know outside of our own planet. Space is filled with imagination and mysteries and questions and things we don't know. And that child and all of us should be interested in space. But instead, it is not like that. Most time when I talk to people on the street about space stuff, they're like, who cares? Why would I care? Who cares? Why would I care about outer space? Why do I care about the sun? Why do I care about planets in our solar system? Why do I care about a comet? Well, let me tell you what. Earth is not the center of the universe. So I'm befuddled, confounded, upset, distraught. Amy Mainzier won't Twitter me back. She must have some highfalutin note from somebody up on high NASA. Like, don't give that circus freak any type of recognition. Because I know if Amy Mainzer was singing, if you like it and you want to put a Hubble motion picture camera on it. If Amy Mainzer was singing that, then I'm pretty sure it would be shortly after. We would be getting some wonderful Hubble footage of Comet Ison. And I'm a guess if she's watched these videos, she thinks they're funny. Although some of the information she might not agree with. But she has all the data, and I don't, man. Crap! You do realize, NASA, you guys have years of tradition and like a trillion dollar collective budget upon me. So, yeah, you guys are going to know more than I do. But I just want to know more. Isn't that what education is? Consistently improving your own mind and knowledge base? Dang it. This reminds me of something else. Did you know there is another dwarf planet in our inner solar system named Ceres? It is true. We've got a dwarf planet in our solar system, inner solar system named Ceres. 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 And I was looking, and you know Ceres, my whole life? Yeah. It's one of the most highly probable planets to hold extraterrestrial life. Terrestrial meaning Earth, extra meaning, you know, like something that comes in a half a meal. And so, like the latest photos we have from that, where clearly it's not just a big rock. And did you know Ceres has more fresh water than Earth? What comes along with lots of fresh water? Life. Anywho, what I'm trying to say is they haven't told us jack crap about Ceres. Instead of actually talking about Ceres or Eris, they demoted Pluto because they know how our minds work. We watch the right hand while the left hand slaps us in the face and takes our wallet out of our short pants and runs up our credit card bills. Anyway, so I think that's just it, man. Like at this point, we're just gonna have to depend upon the pseudoscientists, backyard astronomers, because I don't think we're getting shit on this anytime soon. Hey, sure, yeah, earthquakes are up, fireballs are up, meteorites are up, volcanoes erupting are up, crazy weather's up, but Iceland's got nothing to do with it, right? It's all just natural and totally normal. The fact that everything is different it's totally normal. The sun is freaking out. Four X flares in a 48 hour period. NASA even says the sun is acting in inexplainable ways. But hey, that's all normal. The fact that everything is bizarre is normal. All right, if you have hung on this long, that means you are a core fan. So I'm going to ask something of you, my buddies, in our quest to get him to put the Hubble on it. I would like you to tweet Amy Mainzer, and that is at A-M-Y-M-A-I-N-Z-E-R. Send her a tweet and ask her to please join the chorus of, if you like it and you want it, put the Hubble motion picture camera on it. Ask her please to get involved. I'm telling you, I think she's got magic special powers. Be kind to her, be respectful to her, and, uh... Just ask, as people who love science, just like she does, that we just want to know more. We want to see this beautiful, magical thing. Uh, we want to see this comet. We want to see her up close. We want to see her in action. We want to see her move. We want to see her in all of her wonderful glory. The comet, not Amy. I mean, although if she would grant me an interview for the series, 
I would be more than happy. Also, if you could, tweet my friend, well, my internet friend, I've never met the guy, Matt Miller. You could tweet him at, at M-A-T-T-M-I-L-L-E-R-1973. He works for Bloomberg. None of all the financial people. He is definitely my favorite. He's a bit of a gloomer, and he asks hard-hitting questions. Uh, you know, it would be nice if we could get him, bring me on board at Bloomberg for about a minute. And yeah, I'd clean up, and I wouldn't act too stupid, unless they let me act stupid. And we could talk to people about Common Ison, why it's important to them, why it will be important to them, and why it's going to be the Christmas Comet. And how that ties in with business, they cover some dumb crap at Bloomberg. No offense, Matt. I know you don't cover programming, but... um. Ison's way cooler than like supermodel nail polish. And Matt Miller, if you're listening, get with it, buddy. This is the story of the year. Unless, of course, it spews off all the dust and doesn't even make it to the sun and is a total turd disappointment. Then, it, then, then you're right to totally ignore me. Seriously, Matt Miller, what is the deal? Over at Bloomberg, you guys are doing stories on Buzz Aldrin's $20,000 underwear. I can guarantee you, if I'm going to spend $20,000 on a Buzz, it's not going to be for a man's underwear. Come on, get with it. You're going to do space stories on underwear, but you're going to ignore common icing? That is nuts. Matt, are you being constricted by the TB, TP? Did I say that right? The powers that be. TP, TB. Are you being constricted by TP, TB? If you are, dude, I know. I know. You're just like Bill Clinton. You had to go along with it. Well, at least try. Well, let me know. Space underwear. Fucking, fucking space underwear. Space underwear. So tweet Matt, tweet Amy, if you could. And if you want to tweet me, that's fine. I'm at New Thor. New Thor. Yeah, cool. Like, let's tweet them. Let's, let's see if we can get them to get the hub line. I'm not going to give up. We've only got a couple months left before you can see it in the sky. So, I don't know. And what's up with the math? If it is spewing 120,000 pounds of dust per minute, it's got three or four mile radius. Does anybody have a good dust shedder calculator so we can figure out, is this even going to make it to the sun? If it's as tiny as they say it is. If it's an average size nucleus and average size makeup, what makes it the comet of the century? And if it's got this three mile nucleus and it's spewing 120,000 pounds of dust per minute, when is that... Crap gonna run out? Is it even gonna make it to the sun? You guys are confusing me so much, and I got other stuff to do, you know? Can somebody give me a hug? Damn it. All right, but hey, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you guys are along for this ride, and we will be victorious. They will put the Hubble on it, and it will be worth it. And then we will have a party, I guarantee you. In a totally normal way. Don't get all creeped out, man. Trust me. I'm way too egotistical to stalk anybody. If anything, I stalk myself 24 seven. All right then, oh my God. I just looked at the tweet from Amy Mainzer, and she says, "Aw, oh, thanks, and welcome to the hive mind that is Twitter. Now, what is freaky about that is Ender in Ender's Game fights the hive, the buggers. So is she basically saying she's part of the buggers? Oh, Lord, must my heart breaketh and my romanticism be crestfallen at all times. Space underwear in your face. All right, later. I can guarantee you if I'm going to spend $20,000 on a buzz, it's not going to be for a man's underwear. Space underwear in your face. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. Heart a double dust feature. I'm going to pop some dust features. A double dust feature. All right, here's the real deal. Holyfield punch in the face. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple shots of the crappy timeline that I put together. And if you'll notice, from December 2012 to about April the 13th, Ison was in Gemini. From May to August, Ison will be in Cancer. And from September to December, Ison will be in Leo the Lion. And lions are badass. So that means September through December are going to be pretty dang awesome. Ison was announced to us 9-24-12 and will reach perihelion with the sun around December 13th. And so in the eight months that have passed in this, let's say, 15-month lifespan of Ison from telling us about it to it getting to its most spectacular, we got one crappy B-movie 1940s Ed Wood sci-fi black and white video from NASA, which doesn't show us much, but at least it's moving. Gotta give him credit for that. And then, they shot in January, we got it in February. And then we got a single photograph from the Hubble, April 10th. It is now May 23rd. So in the eight month span, which is over half of this magnificent life, we've gotten one video, one photograph. And that's just bizarre. I mean, that's beyond bizarre. This is by far the most interesting celestial body we know of that shall be coming around this year. Could be the most important, interesting, exciting, and romantic sky watching event ever to known modern mankind, science and television, and media. Media's death on it, dumb and blind, obsessed with dead children. Man, America loves murdering freaks who kill white girls, little white babies. That is just bizarre. Bizarre, America. What the F is wrong with you? Why do you give so much attention to murderers? Craziest and worst parts of our civilization get the most amounts of attention. Where Comet Ison, which is a magical gift of the universe, gets very little. I mean, it's been like a, like a fly fart. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Yeah, they ain't giving us much. We got a new article saying that Ison has a dust feature. 